have a 2011 GMC Sierra 2500 HD. Let's have a look at the dash here. Christmas tree lights on here. Change engine oil. Stability track light on. ABS light on. Parking brake. Service trailer brake system. Now he did say to me uh, at one point it wouldn't crank. Um, he had all these messages come up on the dash while he was driving it and he brought it home and shut it off and it wouldn't start, it wouldn't crank. Uh, he disconnected the battery for a couple of days because he was out of town and when he came back, reconnected the battery, it started. So we're going to scan it, do a network scan and see what kind of codes it's setting. So this is a new vehicle record, I've never scanned this before. At least not to my knowledge. Should automatically ID the vehicle. Yeah, 2011-66LML. A lot more labor. New one. Okay, cool. So we're going to do a network code scan and see what kind of network codes we've got. I'm sure we're going to have some network communication codes. I was right. Lost communication with ABS. Control module, communication bus off. Starter relay control circuit. I wonder if he removed the starter relay. I'm going to have to ask him. Cruise control switch signal circuit. Theft deterrent key incorrect. Well, that could account for the no crank. Way to start lap control circuit, traction control torque request circuit. Transmission controller has an undocumented code. Lost communication with the ECM. No codes in the airbag. Body control module, battery voltage above threshold. Lost communication with trailer brake. Lost communication with instrument panel. Lost communication with ABS. Oh boy. Electronic control unit performance RAM failure. Electronic control unit performance ROM failure. Now this, keep in mind, he disconnected the battery, so these codes have all set since he disconnected the battery. Device voltage low. Lost communication with ECM, TCM, BCM, ABS. Wow. Where to even start with this kind of mess? Some of these codes could be generated by the customer disconnecting and reconnecting the battery. <clears throat> Obviously, the codes in the PCM for the starter relay could have counted for the starter not cranking, but so could this thief 0513 theft deterrent code. So we're going to, we've got a record of all of these. We're going to do uh, clear all codes, start the vehicle, run it, and see what resets. So I'm doing a network code clear. if there was any modules that weren't there. It's got trailer brake control and I didn't see that. Because it did say service trailer brake control. Hmm. 13? I think there should be more than 13 modules. Communication interface is on star. Transfer case, tire pressure, theft deterrent, radio. Where's the trailer brake control? Trailer brake control module. Display codes. That's what I thought. No communication with the trailer brake control module. I just got to make sure it's got that. Yes, it does have a trailer brake control module. And the message on the dash when I went there was service trailer brake system. So 
let's do another code scan and see what has come back. So that trailer brake control module could be affecting the network. Yeah. Network problems can cause a no crank condition on these trucks too, because the BCM needs to communicate across the CAN bus to the PCM, and it has to talk with the transmission controller in order to get a neutral safety indication. Well, certainly a lot less better have a look at the network activity and see what it looks like. So I'm not liking this CAN bus signal. We've got the breakout box installed in here. Channel 1 is connected to CAN H. Channel 2, which is green, is connected to CAN L. And I'm using pin 4. Now I'm going to switch to pin 5 for ground. It doesn't make any difference. Let's see what it looks like key on engine off. That's definitely not good. Should be about two and a half volts on each one and it should be a mirror image. So the CAN L signal, the green trace here, should be a mirror image of this one and it's not even close. Hmm. Well, we're gonna let this activity terminate and check terminating resistance. So turn the key off and just wait wait several minutes and the CAN bus will go to sleep. And then we can measure terminating resistance if there's no activity on it. We could disconnect the batteries, but being a diesel that means two batteries. So I'll just wait for the network to go to sleep. Like that. So it's asleep now. I'm going to disconnect my scan tool to make sure that the scan tool isn't affecting it. And I'm going to switch to an ohmmeter. So I've got the ohmmeter across pins 6 and 14 and I'm reading 34 ohms. should be reading around 60 plus or minus you know, 61 to 59, somewhere in that range. Now I'm going to recalibrate my ohmmeter just to make sure. So after recalibrating it still reads 34 ohms. So we're going to check the network, especially the uh, wiring to the uh, trailer brake control module. and. Uh, being a diesel, this doesn't have a fuel pump control module, so it's a little different. And there's a terminating resistor back there. So I'm just doing a visual inspection under the vehicle. And I see there's been some hocus pocus done to the ABS wiring here. There's a wire spliced in there. He mentioned something about somebody running a new wire to the rear speed sensor. But look what they did. They ran the wire on the outside of the harness. It's supposed to be a twisted pair. There's other wires up here on top. That must be trailer wiring or something. Or uh, camper wiring. Oh my goodness sakes. Well, I gotta drop this spare tire down because that trailer brake control module is up above the spare tire. Okay, let's do that. So with the spare tire dropped, as you can see, this is the trailer brake control module here. And this is the terminating resistor right here. It's normally taped up in the harness right there, but it's fallen down. So we're gonna put the ohmmeter across that, that uh, network again watch it while we manipulate the wires back here and see if there's any change so here's the high-speed CAN bus from pin 6 and 14 of the DLC it goes to the junction block under the uh, instrument panel and from there to the BCM and automatic transmission controller and then the ECM 
on diesels it goes oh it goes over this way here to diesels but I'm sure that the ECM and BCM are functioning fine we need to follow the circuit from the junction block IP to the next diagram D and C down here it comes from the G junction block IP and it goes to the transfer case shift control module and it goes to the electronic brake control module and out of the electronic brake control module over on this side goes to the trailer brake control module and to that terminating resistor so I removed that terminating resistor there it is there and it's not corroded and it still shows 34 ohms so either the trailer brake control module is shorted or the wires are shorted somewhere I didn't check between uh, the resistance between either the CAN bus wires and ground I can do that but I think I'm going to undo this unplug this trailer brake control module um, the other option is to go to the EBCM the electronic brake control module and identify the pins let's see JL4 10 series JH6 JH7 you gotta know all the RPO codes for the brake systems on these to determine which two pins on the trailer brake control or on the EBCM the electronic brake control module are the network out uh, I think I'm gonna just unplug this trailer brake control module that's easier I'm there now so there's the trailer brake control module unplugged. I blew it out already with the compressed air. There's no signs of green corrosion in there. And now I'm expecting it to read 120 ohms. And we still got 35. So we're going to disconnect it at the EBCM, which is the electronic brake control module, and see if, if the short is after the EBCM or internal in the EBCM. So I got the EBCM disconnected. Man, that's full of sand. No obvious green corrosion in there, but now we have 122 ohms resistance. So either the EBCM is shorted internally and taking down the CAN bus on the way to the trailer brake control module, or the wiring between the EBCM and the trailer brake control module is compromised. Um, a couple ways we could establish that. We could identify the four pins that are can in and can out and make little jumpers in here and then see if we can talk to the trailer brake control module or we can measure the resistance from here to the back. I think we'll do that, that's easier. I gotta just get a pin out for this connector now. So the four network wires at the ABS module are pin 2324 and 3637. Uh, they're actually across from each other so 24 and 37 are coming from the front and 23 and 36 are going to the back so I've got it across 24 and 37 and that comes from the ECM and it reads 122 ohms so now I'm going to connect it across the next two pins down and these two probes here are 24 thousandths of an inch just so you know they're uh, back probing pins but they're actually the same dimension as the pins inside the ECU. Very careful not to use anything thicker than that you will compromise the terminals in there. So across pins 36 and 23 it reads infinite or at least over 400 ohms. I'm going to change the range here to 400,000. So it's greater than 400,000. So we're going to plug in that terminating resistor and the EBCM at the back, or the uh, trailer brake control module at the back. So with the trailer brake control module plugged in, measuring across pins, uh, let's see, that was 23 and 36. It reads 122 ohms. So the wiring is good. Let's jumper those two pins together to send the signal back to the trailer brake control module and make sure that we got communication with it. So I've jumped 36 to 37 and 24 to 23. And what that does is bypass the ABS module. Um, 
I'm thinking the ABS module is taking down the uh, network, but we'll find out now if we can communicate. We're going to let the vehicle down and measure terminating resistance with this connector disconnected and the two jumpers. It should be, uh, it should be 60 ohms now, 60, 61 ohms, something like that. Let's have a look. So I got the ohmmeter connected across pin 6 and 14 of the DLC, and it reads 61 ohms. Let's have a look at the network activity now. That's better. Network activity looks perfectly normal now. Biased at about 2.6 volts on CAN H and 2.3 volts on CAN L. So the yellow trace is CAN H, the green trace is CAN L. And the yellow trace is connected to pin uh, 14 and the green trace is connected to pin 6. I think. Yeah. Let's see if we can communicate with the trailer brake control module now. Should have network codes for loss of communication with the ABS. So we'll do a network code clear again. I got the key on, but it's not running. Last time it went through this, it did not talk to the trailer brake control module. Let's watch for it here. Transfer case, vehicle communication. Uh, I don't see it. Well, let's have a look. Trailer brake control module. Display codes. Current code. Well, we do have communication with it. Let's check for data in there. Data. Yes, we have communication. So there's nothing wrong with the trailer brake control module. It's the anti-lock brake control module that's taking down the CAN bus. Uh, of course, we won't have communication with that. It does have vehicle stability enhancement. And there will be no communication, of course. And let's go back and read the network codes. Code scan. And we should have several modules lost communication with the ABS, as I suspected. That's funny, the BCM doesn't uh, report a loss of communication, but the engine control module does. Glow plug. Oh. Well, the glow plug control module is networked through the PCM. Well, let's find out what it's going to take to replace this uh, EBCM on here, and it'll have to be flash programmed when it's installed. Those jumpers are only a temporary repair. You could never leave it like that. It would turn green and corrode in no time flat. Lost communication with the ABS. So, I got to check with the dealer on the part. That module 209-80215 is not available from the aftermarket according to my information. There's no used assemblies available. Uh, there's one in Canada and Quebec apparently. I'm really skeptical about a used one. I got a used one now. Uh, a new one is two weeks away. Got to come out of the States. So I put a plastic baggie over the connector and I've tied it I wrapped it up to the uh, shift cable and the truck can be driven like this until we get the new part. So I went to take the truck out of the outside and the trailer brake message came up on the dash and I think the reason why is because there's a serial data wake up wire that goes through the EBCM as well and uh, I've got communication with the trailer brake control module but now I've got some codes for communication wake-up signal system disabled information store lost communication with the ABS so there is another network wire I'll show you which one that is so here is the serial data communication enable circuit it's a one wire they call it a high-speed uh, serial data wire 
that goes between the BCM and this splice pack and it connects a bunch of modules together. Uh, those would include the electronic brake control module on pin 12 and it also goes to the trailer brake control module. But it's not in series, it looks like it's in parallel here. Hmm. Well, we got a message to service trailer brake system, but we got communication with it. I think we're going to go ahead and order the uh, EBCM, because I know it needs that, and put that in and then address the trailer brake problem after the fact. Because in theory, it's in parallel. If we can believe these schematics, these schematics take into consideration HP2, which is hybrid. And we've got to answer the phone.